Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's a sin to keep someone tied up in a disused tunnel until they teach you how to make a girl fall in love with you, right? Yeah, then I've sinned. But really, it's no more than he deserves. An eye for an eye. And if anyone knows the secret to Elizabeth's heart, it's Quentin. He's proved that. Yesterday, when I told him my proposal, that he'd show me how to win Elizabeth in exchange for his freedom, he wasn't exactly keen. He gave me a lot of abuse, saying how I'm a lost cause, and how if his survival depends on me getting off with a girl, I might as well kill him now. So I left him there. I figured a night tied up in that tunnel with a trough of dirty water would help him see things more clearly. And sure enough, when I went back this morning, he was a lot more compliant. Hardly enthusiastic, but resigned to the fact that he had to help me. Still, the first thing he did was warn me it might not work. He was all, there's no secret trick to make women fall in love with you, you know. And actually, if you believe there is, you've fallen at the first hurdle. What, you think they're dumb beasts that will drop at your feet if only you learn the magic words? Or actually, are they complex, intelligent people that can't be duped into loving anyone who wants them? And if you treat them like dumb beasts, what do you think your chances are? I was all, I get what you're saying, but you did it. You made her love you, even though you don't give a shit about her. Teach me that. I'd taken along some bottled water and sandwiches. He didn't deserve anything more than the same ditch water he'd given Elizabeth, but today was for my benefit, and I didn't want him distracted by hunger. His arms were tied to the railing, so I had to hand-feed him. It was pretty obvious that he'd have happily bitten my fingers off, except that would have meant no more sandwiches. He was all, oh yes, I made her love me. That's different. I'm not a miserable, artless little tit. Besides, that wouldn't be enough, would it? For my purposes, trickery was fine. But you're asking for real love. I said, at this point, I'll settle for anything. If I can trick her into thinking she loves me, over time that might develop into the real thing. He laughed at me. He, this helpless, worthless creature tied up in my lair, laughed at me. It was humiliating, but I didn't get angry. I just threw away his sandwich. He'd only had one bite. He was all, that's not how it works. But you know what? We can do better. If you play your cards right, I think we can make her love you for real. Let's talk terms. I said, what are you talking about? Terms. He said, I want an understanding that if I try to help you, I get released, whatever the outcome. You're not leaving me to rot just because you screw it up. I would have promised that when I get out of here, you'll be out of my life for good. And I want another fucking sandwich. I was all fine, whatever, just tell me what to do. He was all, that depends. Tell me why you love her. Well, I didn't exactly feel like spilling my guts to that bastard, so I was all, never mind why I love her, how do I make her love me? But he said, you still don't get it, do you? There's no catch-all formula, I need details. So I was all, fine, I love... I love everything about her. She's the only girl I've ever loved. The only girl I could love. He was all, oh, really? Six billion people in the world and you just happened to meet the only girl you could ever love. Spare me the Mills and Boone bullshit. I said, haven't you ever heard of God's plan? He snorted and said, do me a favour. Seriously, if you really believe you've met the one girl in the world who's perfect for you, you're more deluded than I thought. I was all, that's where you're wrong, actually. You can have your one perfect partner. It happens all the time. Not by luck or magic or divine intervention. It's just how things work. If you don't understand that, you've never truly been in love. He laughed again when I said that, and I thought, this isn't fair. He's been tied up all night on this platform that feels like it might collapse at any minute, and still he's laughing more than I am. He said, oh, that's rich. The kid thinks women can be programmed by pressing the right buttons like fucking Metal Mickey, and I'm the one who doesn't understand love. Eager enough for my help, though, aren't you? I was all, well, maybe I shouldn't be, since you don't even know how love works. And he was all, ah, now we're getting to the meat. This is what I need to hear. Come on, then. How do you think love works? So I told him. I told him my theory of perfect love, formulated over countless hours alone in bed, usually while crying into a pillow. I was all, 
Everyone's got an image of their perfect woman, haven't they? Their platonic ideal. Maybe yours is girls with blue eyes, button noses and pert lips. Only that's just the start. There'll be dozens of criteria. And you're right, you'll never meet an exact match. Statistically, it's a write-off. But you'll meet girls you match 90-95%. Maybe they've got the blue eyes and pert lips, but not the button nose. So you kind of fancy them, but they're not perfect. Only now you like this girl, and you think about her all the time, and your platonic ideal starts to warp, doesn't it? Suddenly, button noses don't seem so important, but you find yourself drawn to... Oh, let's say she's got freckles. So now that's your ideal. Blue eyes, pert lips and freckles. And the more you love this girl, the more you think about her, the more you're with her, eventually your platonic ideal is her. And when she dumps you, after a long relationship, no one else is good enough. Because no one else is her. Quentin was all, the trouble, of course, is that you haven't had a long relationship with Elizabeth, have you? One date, you said, so how come you're at the point where Elizabeth's your perfect woman? You got me there. I had to admit I'd been a bit messed up. I was so lonely before Elizabeth came into my life. I had nothing, no one. My ideal woman? It wasn't blue eyes or pert lips or blonde hair or massive tits or anything like that. I mean, those would have been nice. But basically, my ideal woman was anyone that would give me the time of day. So when Elizabeth did, bang, I let myself believe she was everything I'd been looking for because it's, it was too hard to admit that I was desperate. But now, after years of obsessing, she really has become my perfect woman. Or rather, my perfect woman has become Elizabeth. But I can't imagine life without her. Quentin was all, yeah, really fucked up there, haven't you? You've fallen all the way in love with her. Now you expect her to join you. Come on in, the water's lovely. Not going to happen. Falling in love's a dance, you take it... Step by step, together in harmony. That's how I won Elizabeth, by always presenting myself as just slightly more interested in her than she was in me. Guiding her in, see? That's how you do it. But you've blown it, haven't you? She knows you're obsessed, and she's freaked out. She won't follow you now. It seemed like he was saying there's no hope for me. But then he said, you could still have a chance. He said I should be... Honest. Tell her everything I've told him. Show her I've changed. That I've got a bit more self-awareness now. Maybe my love for her didn't happen in the right way. Maybe I was fucked in the head, but I'm better now. And yet my feelings remain. If she can understand that and accept my feelings without being freaked out by them. Quentin thinks, just maybe, she'll come to feel the same. I think he's right. I think I'm going to get the girl.